at a test prep. And unfortunately, Andrew is having some connection issues, so I'm going to uh, run the presentation tonight. What's great about the SAT, and when we say quick and easy grammar rules for the SAT, these will, a lot of these will also apply to the ACT. What's great about these grammar rules is they're very predictable. They're very repetitive. Um, you are going to see these grammar rules on every single SAT and ACT. And once you have a few strategies and have spent a little bit of time um, practicing on these rules, you're going to recognize these questions very, very easily. So <clears throat> let's jump right in and, uh, and get started. Um, so it will, uh, you'll get the most out of the class tonight if you have a pen or a pencil, if you have some paper, and, and obviously make sure to turn up the volume on your computer. So um, let me give everybody a minute now. If you don't have paper, if you don't have a pen or a pencil, um, go ahead and grab that now. Muted. Okay, so just a quick introduction to the writing portion of the SAT. So there will be an essay on the SAT. It's 25 minutes. Uh, that's one section. A second section is there's a 35 question multiple choice um, section that takes that they give you 25 minutes for that. And then there's a 14 question multiple choice section. You have 10 minutes for that section. So it's interesting to note everyone that the essay only makes up 30% of your writing score. So jot that down if you weren't aware of that. The essay is only 30%. The multiple choice grammar questions make up 70% of your writing score. And that's why this webinar tonight is so important. And by the way, we are recording this session. You will get a recording tomorrow. Um, I strongly recommend that you watch at least parts or all of the recording again, maybe the week before you take the SAT or ACT, maybe even the night before your SAT or ACT, and that will make a difference on your score. Many of you may have been on one of our previous webinars and have heard me say this. Each question you get right on the SAT represents a 10-point increase in your score. So if you watch this webinar, if you participate tonight, and then you watch it one more time before your SAT, you, it's very likely you get five or 10 more grammar questions correct just from this webinar. That could be a 50 to 100-point difference. <clears throat> so the most common or one of the most common rules on the SAT is a rule called subject verb agreement and um, there are going to be at least three or four of these questions on your SAT um, and uh, I want to just point your guys attention to the example at the bottom there because it's a classic SAT sort of trick or um, or a question they ask the group of students runs in the park. So many, uh, many students who take the SAT will be tripped up by a question like this. Here, the subject of the sentence is group. That's a singular subject. So we need a singular verb. So we wouldn't say the group run in the park. We would say the group runs. But many people will look at the word students and mistakenly think that it should be run, so students run. So the reason those prepositions are listed there is once you have a preposition, the word after the preposition is not the subject of the sentence. Okay? The word before the preposition is, is going to be the subject. So here it's the group runs in the park. And, um, Hopefully that example makes sense to you. If it doesn't, again, watch the recording uh, tomorrow, listen to the recording tomorrow, and, and, and just you know, play it as many times as you need to until it makes sense, because you're going to see this rule, this trick, um, this concept again and again, again, on both the SAT and the ACT. <clears throat> so 
And here's another example of how they'll try to trick you. Andrew, having red hair, is mistaken as Irish. So um, here it's Andrew is mistaken um, as being Irish. And, and that, that clause there in the middle is just there to throw you off. Okay, so here's an example question. It's more interesting for all of you guys if you have a chance to participate. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a poll. Take about 30 seconds to a minute. Try this question. And, uh, and once you guys have had a chance to give it a shot, we'll go over the correct answer. So let me go ahead. Actually, take 30 seconds and read this question. You're going to decide where the error is. If there's no error, then you're going to go ahead and choose E. Ten more seconds, I'm going to launch the poll. So go ahead and choose the underlined portion that you believe represents an error, grammatical error. Or if you don't think there's a grammatical error, then go ahead and choose E. Okay, most of you have had a chance to answer, and um, nice job, many of you were correct. The correct answer is C, and the reason why the correct answer is C is you notice that the word, the word use is the subject of the sentence, the use of irrigation in the once arid region. So we can't say have increased, it has to be has increased. Has goes with a singular word. And as and I'm sure as soon as I say this out loud, um, the folks who had gotten this one wrong say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Have would go with a plural word. So if it was the uses of irrigation in the once arid region, then have would be correct. So this may seem like an easy example to some of you. That's good news because this is rated at least a medium level question on the SAT or ACT. So it's more a matter of being on the lookout for this rule, and it's more of a matter of knowing what to look for. And that's why practice for the SAT and ACT makes such a huge difference. So the use has increased. OK, let's move on to another example. OK, so again, more interesting for you if you have a chance. Go ahead and try this for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to launch the poll. Okay, give this one a shot, everybody. Even if you're not sure, give it your best guess. Okay, uh, most people have had a chance to vote. This was a tricky question, and um, the answers were kind of all over the place. But the right answer is choice B. The reason why is here the word reforms. Close that, Paul. The word reforms is the subject. That's a plural word. It's got an S at the end. So you have to say have not managed. Critics contend that reforms in welfare have not managed to bring the high percentage of our nation's children. And one little strategy, everyone, is I wouldn't even continue reading because I'm so sure I recognize this rule. I know the SAT and ACT. They're going to test me on this rule. So as soon as I saw choice B and I knew it had to be switched to have, I can save myself a few seconds by just putting B and moving on. It's unfortunate, guys, that you really don't have time to read everything two, three times. Um, both the SAT and, and even more so the ACT, 
It's all about timing. Um, and again, that's why practicing makes such a big difference, because you have to be able to fly through these questions. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Oh, this is a great, great question. Guys, take 30 seconds and read this one, and then I'll launch another poll. Okay. Go for it. Put down an answer even if you're not 100% sure. Okay. Most people have had a chance to vote. Um, and this one was tricky, and a lot of folks put down E, no error, which is exactly what the SAT is hoping to fool you into picking, but the answer is A. Now, why is the answer A? It's because the word insistence is the subject. And please jot this down if you haven't already. The word insistence almost sounds like a plural word, but of course it's a singular word, it's not insistences, it's insistence. So it's a singular subject. So in choice A, the, the error is you need to change it to the word is. The professor's insistence is not, despite what students think, part of a plan to withhold high grades from them. Now, um, on my, if, if, I had a, if I had my SAT booklet in front of me, I'd almost put an X through the word standards and I put an X through the word examinations. Those words are there on purpose to confuse you. Okay? Um, also, you can, you can almost put a parenthesis around on high standards and rigorous examinations because those words are not the main subject. The main subject is the word insistence. It's singular, so the professor's insistence is not, despite what students think. Okay? Um, this is a great example, guys, and you know this may seem really easy to a lot of you guys now because we've now done three in a row, same rule, but on the day of the test, when you're under time pressure, this kind of question can really throw you off. So again, I would really encourage you to watch, listen to this recording the night before your SAT because you're going to see a question just like this. It's, it's almost comical to me how they just test you on the same stuff over and over again. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> uh, this is a great one as well. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm a little bit of an SAT and ACT dork, but this is a very typical question. Go ahead and give this a shot for a minute. Another five seconds. Okay, give me your best shot. <clears throat> okay, most people have voted. Put an answer down. If you haven't voted yet, put an answer down even if you're not 100% sure. It's more fun to give it a shot before I tell you the answer. Okay, nice job everybody, or not everybody, but many, many people got this one right. It is choice B. Why is it B? It's got to be changed to is. Now somebody says, you got to be kidding me. Techniques are. If techniques was the subject, then R would be correct. But techniques is not the subject. The subject is mastery, okay? And there's, um, Andrew had put that slide earlier today with, the, prep, with the, um, the, the prepositional phrases, and there's of, 
that anything that comes after of is not going to be the main subject. So the main subject here is mastery. It's not masteries. It's one, mastery. So mastery is mandatory. Okay? A, good, a nice little technique is don't even read the words after mastery. Just ask yourself, do the subject and the verb agree? Here they do not agree, and the error has to be choice B. Mastery is. So again, when, when you hear people say that the SAT and the ACT are quote-unquote trick tests, this is the kind of question that folks are referring to. They're trying to trick you here. They purposely put techniques there to throw you off. But it's mastery is mandatory. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on. So go ahead and read this one to yourself. Get an answer in your head. Now, this question, so I'm not going to launch a poll, everybody, um, on this one. And you can just kind of have the answer in your head. This question is near and dear to my heart um, because I have twin five-year-olds, and my five-year-old boy is addicted to Peter Pan. Um, so he would love this question. And um, no, I haven't started him on SAT prep yet. I, I'm not that cruel of a father. but. Here, the error is C, because it's got to be continue. Now, why continue? The subject is flights. The subject is flights. It's plural. So Peter's seemingly effortless flights. And you can basically cross out everything that's inside the commas. That is not, um, that's a clause in the sentence. And when you have a clause, you can, you can take all those words out and read the sentence without those words. So let's try that. Peter's seemingly effortless flights continues to delight those who see the play. Peter Pan, that's no good. Peter's seemingly effortless, effortless flights continue to delight those. So the error is C. And I do have some students who every once in a while they get confused for a second. They say, wait a second, flights is plural. So shouldn't you have an S at the end of continue? And whenever a student says that, I say, just remind yourself, use a really simple example. Would you say the boys runs down the street? Of course you wouldn't. And it helps you remember, it's not the boys runs, it's the boys run. So it's the flights continue. Now, it's interesting, everybody, that we have not had an E yet. And I want to address that right now. Many students don't like to choose E, no error, because they think that that's, that's a trick answer and it's, it's usually there's an error in the sentence. And I want you to know that's not the case. For tonight, we've done questions that had an error because we pick these questions on purpose. But um, you know what? Jot this down. On the SAT, there should be approximately an equal number of choice A's choice B's, choice C's, choice D's, and choice E's. So um, you should be choosing no error on approximately one out of every five questions. Now, there are 18 of these questions on the SAT, around 18 of them. So you should choose E, no error, about four or five times per SAT. Now, students have said to me, well, how does that help me? Um, you know, when do I choose E? I can't, I can't obviously give you an easy rule when to choose E, but if you notice that you're choosing E, it, let, let, you should all do a practice SAT before you take the real thing. And if you notice you choose E seven or eight times, you're choosing it too much. If you notice you only choose E one or two times, you're not choosing no error enough. And that's the mistake that most people who just start to prepare for the SAT, they don't choose no error enough. So um, make sure, again, you're right around four or five no errors. And here is my strategy for when I choose E. I read the sentence once. Okay, I listen for an error. If I don't hear a grammatical error, 
then I read the sentence one more time and I pause at each underlined portion. And I ask myself, could that be the error? And if, if I don't hear an error that second time when I've paused at each portion, I'm going to go ahead and choose E. What, I'm, what that strategy helps me avoid is I'm not going to be that guy who's reading the sentence five times looking for an error. Because if that happens to you, your brain's just going to spin and you're going to choose something because, you know, you, you, you're, you, know, you have smoke coming out of your ears. So I would advise you, don't read the sentence more than twice. Second time, read it slowly and listen for an error. So that's a little strategy when to choose choice E. Okay, let's move on. Again, give this one a shot. Read it to yourself. Okay, I'm not going to launch a poll on this one, so have an answer in your head before I explain. And we're going to use the same technique, everybody. Don't read the words inside the commas. So here, that's and the United Nations itself. We can take those words out, and let's hear how the sentence sounds without them. Many nations has issued stamps. We can stop reading right there. The error is B. Many nations have issued stamps. Okay? Nations is a subject that's plural. Has goes with singular subjects. Have goes with plural subjects. So the error is B. And um, I hope you guys see the, the, the almost comedy of what we're doing here. It's the same rule again and again and again. And you are, I promise you, um, I don't know how many of you guys are taking the SAT on January 25th, but I promise you, if you are, you're going to see a bunch of these examples. And if you're taking the SAT in March or May, you're going to see a bunch of these. And if you're taking the ACT coming up this spring, you're going to see this same exact concept, subject-verb agreement. Oh, this is a great one. Go ahead and read this to yourself. I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, have an answer in your head. And the answer is A, Y, A, the record is the subject. That's a singular subject. So the record provides scientists. You wouldn't say the record provides scientists. That you can, when, you, when you hear that out loud, it just, you, know, you can instinctively tell that's not correct. Um, so anyway, you know, they're trying to trick you. Look how many plural words they have between record and provide. Fossils is one, remains is two, plants is three, animals is four. Four words to try to throw you off. That's the typical SAT trick right there. So it's the record provides. Um, a lot of students say to me, well, yeah, it's easy when you read it out loud, but if I try to read it out loud when I take the SAT or ACT, I'm going to get thrown out of the test center. That's true. You will get thrown out of the test center. So learn to almost hear your voice in your head. Okay? This is a, one of those times in life when it's good to hear voices in your head. Um, I, I've done so many of these questions, guys, I can almost hear my own voice reading it out loud. So that's a little skill that you can practice. It's not so hard to develop. You almost hear your voice echoing in your head, and then you can hear the, the, the mistake a little bit easier. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so our next rule, the next rule we're going to cover tonight is subject-object agreement. Okay. And students always say to me, how do you know when it's my friend and me or my friend and I? 
So um, here we have a couple of sentences trying to throw you off. It, the, the, first, the next first one will be Jimmy and I go to baseball games. Why? Because, because when it's the subject of the sentence, okay, then it's Jimmy and I. So um, Jimmy and I are going to go to the movies. That's where you use I. When it's you use Jimmy and me when it's the object of the sentence. Something's being done to you. Okay, and I have a lot of students who say to me, "Wait a second! I was taught in school that it's always supposed to be Jimmy and I. It's Jimmy and I when it's the subject, but when it's the object, when something's being done to you, it's Jimmy and me." Okay, so the word between takes the object form of a pronoun, and it's important to remember because. Um, the, sentence can, the sentences can sound odd when we use this rule. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, and I am going to launch a poll on this one, everybody. So go ahead and take 30 seconds. Read this one to yourself and have an answer in your head. Okay, five more seconds and I'll launch the poll. Okay, give you a best shot. Okay, most people had a chance to vote. This was a tricky question. The answer is B. Carlos and I is an error, and here's why. The foundation is the subject of the sentence. The foundation awarded Carlos and me a grant to establish a network of community centers. So, um, so the rule is when, when it's the subject, use Carlos and I. When it's the object, you, you use Carlos and me. There is a trick to help you with this rule that works many, many times. And that is, don't read the Carlos and part. Just read the I or the me to see which one sounds better. So let's try it right now. Apparently impressed with our plans, the foundation awarded I a grant to establish a network of community centers. Or, Apparently impressed with our plans, the foundation awarded me a grant to establish a network of community centers. So you can hear that the me sounds more appropriate. The I sounded very awkward. So what I like to say to students is there's a rule you can follow and there's a trick you can follow. I like to quickly do both in my head and 90% of the time I get a clear match that here me um, was works with our rule, and me works with our trick. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Okay. Give this, read this one to yourself. Now this one may seem pretty easy, everyone. The answer is A. It's got to be my colleague and I, because that is the subject of the sentence. So some students will say, man, that seemed really easy. But this was an actual SAT question. So, um, and actually, can I make a general point about the SAT and ECT? So many students are so full of anxiety over this test they're so worried about the hardest questions. The good news is the SAT is not full of extremely difficult questions, and neither is the ACT. Most questions are medium level, 
and there's a good number of easy level questions. So my point is, is it's normal to be nervous for the SAT or the ACT. That's normal. Okay, everyone is. But I don't want you going in, giving this test too much credit, and thinking it's all going to be stuff that's over your head. There's a lot of stuff on here that's, that's, um, that students can grasp pretty easily. So this is a real SAT question, my colleague and I. Choice A is the error. Let's move on. <clears throat> okay, um, read this one, and then I am going to launch a poll for this one. Okay, so get an answer in your head and let me launch this poll. A few more seconds. Some people are still thinking. Okay, well done. The answer is A, okay? And a lot of people chose that right out of the gate. Um, the, the answer is A, the error is A, because it should be Juan and me. The reason why? It's the object in the sentence. Ms. Tanaka is the subject. She's asking us to do something. So we are the object in the sentence. So Ms. Tanaka asked, Juan and me, whether we would consider joining our school's quiz bowl team. There's the rule. Now let's listen to the trick. Ms. Tanaka asked I whether we would consider, or Ms. Tanaka asked me whether we would consider. Okay? So Ms. Tanaka asked me um, sounds more appropriate. Okay? And, and that's why choice A is the error. Nice job. Okay. Here's a great one to try. Give this a shot, everybody. Okay, five more seconds. Go for it. <clears throat> yep, just a few more votes. Okay, this was a trickier question. The error is a, um, it's got to be my older sister and me. The reason why, uh, we are the object in the sentence. The subject of the sentence is the friendly competition. So the friendly competition between my older sister and me began as soon as we learned. So competition is a subject. We are the object. So it has to be me. If I use our, if I use our trick, the friendly competition between I began, or the friendly competition between me began, they actually both sound weird because it's between two people, but uh, I sounds more weird and, and me sounds you know, less weird. So that would have helped me confirm that A is in fact an error and, and to go ahead and choose A. Okay? And a lot of you guys chose E for this one. Again, um, so far we haven't had any E's tonight, um, but that's just because we handpicked these questions. Okay, so I'm not saying there won't be an E tonight, but um, I know some people are kind of waiting for the E and maybe leaning towards that. Okay, give this one a shot for a second.
Okay. More fun if you guys have a chance to give it a shot. So go for it. A few more seconds. All right, I'm impressed. 64%, uh, 63% um, of you have gotten this one correct. It is choice A. Okay, it's choice A because uh, it's got to be between the sales manager and me. Now, this was a nasty trick question by the folks who make either the SAT or ACT. I've seen this kind of question on bulk exams. Um, they knew if they put between the sales manager and I first, people would think it's the subject, but it's the object. The subject in the sentence is the relationship. Okay? The, really, the way the sentence would sound is the relationship between the sales manager and me was easy. So I mean, did this on purpose, guys. Now, some people will say, hey, that's no fair. You know, that's, they're, they're purposely trying to trick me. There won't be many that are this difficult. This would be an unusually nasty trick question. You can get a very high score on either exam, even if you get a question like this wrong. But if you're getting a question like this right, which 63% of you guys did get it right, um, you're in really good shape because this was a hard question. So. This is a short little concept, everyone, words that go together. So good news is there are no exceptions to these rules. It's always either or. It's always neither nor. It's always between and and. These words always go together. If you ever see the word neither, it has to go with the word nor. I love when this comes up on the SAT or ACT. It's an easy 10 points on the SAT because there are no exceptions. I don't have to think. If I see either, it's got to go with or. Okay, let's try an example. Okay, give this one a shot for a second. Ah, isn't that nice? You look at it and you say, well, Tom just said it's always neither nor. The error is A. Circle A and move on. You don't even have to read the rest of the sentence. Neither the koala bear nor the red panda. How nice is that, everyone? You get a question like this, it feels like a layup. For those of you who are basketball fans out there, it feels like a layup. I've got 10 easy points in my pocket. I can move on. This is why preparing for this exam makes a huge difference. And I can't emphasize it enough, guys. Preparing for the SAT or ACT is a process. Every one of you can do it. Every one of you can score high. Every one of you can um, raise your score. But it takes a commitment. It takes time. Okay? It's January 8th today. You have, if you're a junior this year, you have the next eight or nine months to work towards the best score possible. Okay? Take the SAT or ACT, order the question and answer service or on the ACT, the test information release, look at the ones you've gotten wrong, go over them with a teacher or a tutor or a parent or a friend, and then you'll have, you know, there'll be a whole bunch more questions you'll get right the next time. So um, that's another thing that should make you guys more relaxed. The SAT and the ECT, they're not one-shot deals. That would be much worse. You can always take this test again to score even higher. So. Um, I want you guys to all have confidence. I want you all to have optimism. I want you to all be motivated. You can do this. You just need to put in the time, and it's a process. Okay, let's move on. Okay, give this one a shot. Okay. Um, just go ahead and shout out the answer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't hear you guys. Good thing, too, because there's hundreds of students on with me right now. Um, the answer is B, and I hope you guys were like, yes, easy 10 points. 
Many professional athletes are motivated by either personal pride or love of their sport. We saw the word either, it had to be or. Put down choice B and move on. I love those questions. Next one. Okay, I bet 100% of you guys got this one. The error is B. It's got to be nor, right? Neither Leslie nor. Um, I don't even have to read the rest of the sentence. Let's move on. Can I give this one a shot? Okay, so this is a very tricky question, everyone. This would have been rated a this would have been rated a hard on the SAT. Most students would have gotten this wrong. Um, go ahead and have an answer in your head before I say it. The the answer, the error is D. It should be changed to and. The reason why, whenever you have the word between, it's always and. Now if you hear people talking, you will hear people say, oh, I'm making a choice between engaging in private practice or engaging in research. So many folks will misuse this, this rule, but technically it's got to be, I'm making a choice between this and this. And students say to me, yeah, but can you explain that? I can. Think about it. If you're making a choice, a choice implies you're doing one or the other. So to say I'm making a choice between this or this, you don't need to say or. You already told them you're making a choice. I'm making a choice between this and this is technically correct. And that's why the error here is D. So that would have been the toughest question in this section. So if, if you were thrown off by that or stuck by that one, don't worry about it. Um, but if you see it again, you can you'll probably get this one. I'm making a choice between this and this. Okay. You can read this one. Um, I'm not going to bore you guys. Though the, statistics, though the statistics on the experiment were neither precise nor significant. Error there is D. Okay. And we're just going to do this one quick. You guys have um, been on for a long time. I appreciate your attention. I hope you guys have learned a lot. So one last thing here, comparative and superlative, which are confusing sounding words, but all it means is Comparative is when you're comparing two things, two people or two things. So you use ER, okay? Or you or you use the word more. You, you don't use you don't say more heavier. You just say more heavy or heavier. The superlative is when you're comparing three more three or more than three things or three or more than three people. You use EST or most, okay? So you say most heavy or heaviest, not most heaviest. And okay, let's try an example. So, give this one a shot. Okay, I bet this was an easy one for most of you. The error is D. It should be more clear. You never say more clearer. It's either more clear or clearer. So, error is D. Let's move on. Okay, take your time on this one. Okay, the error here is D, and the reason why, it's got to be the stronger. You're only comparing two animals. Since you're only comparing two animals, you don't say the strongest, you say the stronger. Okay, if, it, if you were comparing three or more than three animals, you would say the strongest. So the error here is D, um, and that question was rated at least the medium. Okay. Um, everyone, I, uh, we're going to wrap up in a minute. Um, let me go back to an earlier slide here. If you found this webinar to be helpful, we offer a number of other uh, online classes 
so we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. Tonight was just a small taste of what we do. We just went through three or four rules quickly. Um, there are many more ground rules. We have math classes, we have reading classes, we have classes for the ACT, the SAT. So to find these classes, okay, uh, you just go to methodtestprep.com slash online classes. Um, these are really convenient. You take the classes right from home. You don't have to travel. Okay, it's freezing cold here where I am in New York right now. Uh, don't have to go out at night. We record all of the online classes so that if you can't participate in one, you can still benefit from the class. You get to participate in the class. Okay, usually we have uh, a camera. We have, um, we're able to use, you know, a whiteboard. Um, tonight I did not have that capability, but on our online classes we do offer that. And so just to give you guys an example, um, the week leading up to the January SAT, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, we have what we call hour and a half mini classes. Each class is just $50, okay? And if you decide to sign up for one, we do have a field for promo code. If you put in 15 off, you will receive 15% off of the fee for the class. So on the $50 class, okay, you get about, um, you get $750 off, okay, and, and it's a nice savings. Um, and you also have the option, okay, let me just show everybody this to make it simpler. If I go to the Method Test Prep homepage, and you see here live online classes, click on this link. And when you click on this link, it opens up all of the, the, the different online classes that we offer. So the SAT mini classes, okay, you have all, all the information right here. Okay, and these are the ones I just referred to. So each class is an hour and a half. It's a perfect review for right before you take the SAT. Okay, all, all four classes are you can purchase all four classes for $150, so you, you get one for free. And if you use the promo code 15 off, you will get 15% off of the entire $150. So that, that would be a larger savings, obviously. Okay, and, and um, we have the SAT math class, SAT reading, SAT writing, and then we have an, an SAT advanced math class. So if you're a pretty strong math student, I would definitely encourage you to take a look at this class and consider this class because we'll go through the toughest math questions and strategies for dealing with those. Okay, so um, great job everybody um, and uh, I hope everybody got something out of this class tonight. Uh, good luck as you prepare for the SAT and ACT. Remember it takes time, it takes a commitment but if you put in the time, you will see a difference in your SAT and in your ACT score. So, um, so again, good luck and have a great night, everybody.